Thanksgiving week, 2013, America shops. At Target stores nationwide, scanners sing the rhythm of the holidays. Each swipe, each beep is a promise, a trusted exchange between customer and corporation. But in the circuitry beneath, something else stirs. Hidden in memory, lines of code quietly watch and copy. 40 million cards, 70 million names, one of the largest retail breaches in history, unfolding in silence. How did a few lines of code turn a trusted brand into a global headline? Greg Steinhavel, Target CEO, a disciplined executive guiding one of America's retail giants. Brian Krebs, former Washington Post reporter turned independent cyber sleuth, known for following data trails most never see. And Fazio Mechanical, a small Pennsylvania HVAC contractor. Three players in a story that would prove how even the smallest door left unlocked can bring down a fortress. A modern retailer is a digital organism. Every store, every register, linked in a lattice of data. When you swipe your card, your information travels from the terminal through Target's internal network to payment processors. Inside that network, trust is assumed. Security walls keep outsiders out. But inside those walls, systems trust each other implicitly. And that's exactly where the attackers hid. In late November 2013, intruders gained a foothold. Through stolen credentials from Fazio Mechanical, they entered Target's vendor portal, a legitimate backdoor meant for remote HVAC management. Once inside, they scanned, mapped, and moved laterally. Within days, they installed a payload on thousands of POS devices, a memory scraper called Black Poss. It waited quietly. Each time a card was swiped, it copied the data in system memory, before encryption, before security could react. The theft began right as the holiday rush peaked. Days before Christmas, fraud analysts at major banks saw a pattern. Thousands of new charges traced back to one retailer, Target. Brian Krebs received a tip. Cards stolen from Target are flooding the underground market. On December 18th, he published the story that Target had been breached. By the next morning, the world knew. Investigators traced the attacker's path backward. The entry point wasn't an elite zero-day exploit. It was a small contractor's login. Fazio Mechanical had remote access for routine maintenance. Their systems weren't hardened, their antivirus out of date. Hackers stole their credentials through a simple phishing email. A tiny breach in a tiny company became a superhighway into one of America's biggest retailers. Black POS, the malware, was deceptively simple. It lived in the point-of-sale system's memory. Every time a cashier swiped a card, the data, track one and track two, flashed briefly in RAM. The malware copied it instantly, storing it in temporary files. Each day, during business hours, it quietly sent that data to an internal server, camouflaged as legitimate traffic. From there, the data was exfiltrated to drop sites in Russia. Within two weeks, tens of millions of identities were for sale. Target's defenses did raise alarms. FireEye, their security platform, flagged unusual activity, malware detected, alerts generated. 
but the warnings weren't escalated. Some were dismissed as false positives. The company's network segmentation, meant to isolate payment systems, failed to contain the spread. What could have been a contained breach became a corporate disaster. December 19, 2013, Target confirms the breach. 40 million payment cards compromised. A month later, they reveal 70 million personal records also exposed. Names, emails, addresses, phone numbers. Holiday sales plummet. Customers feel betrayed. The attack cost Target over $200 million in direct damages and in immeasurable trust. By early 2014, pressure mounts. CEO Greg Steinheffel resigns after 35 years with the company. Lawsuits emerge from banks, states, and consumers. Target commits $100 million to upgrade payment terminals and accelerate chip card adoption. The company begins the long road to repair both systems and reputation. The breach sent shockwaves beyond retail. It forced industries to confront uncomfortable truths. Security isn't a product, it's a process. In 2017, Target settled with 47 states for $18.5 million. The company revamped monitoring, incident response, and vendor management. Across the world, merchants raced to adopt EMV chip cards and network segmentation. The breach became a textbook case, a modern parable of digital vulnerability. Ten years later, the lessons echo. A breach born from one overlooked email, one unpatched machine, one missed alert. Security failed not through absence, but through inattention. Every company believes it can't happen to them until it does. Somewhere right now, another login blink screen, another shadow waits. How many more will learn the same lesson the same way after the damage is done?